topic I have today might sound a bit odd coming from a pharmacist. So I've been a pharmacist for 12 years, but I'm often found talking about de-prescribing. So what do you think I mean when I talk about de-prescribing? Obviously, the more medications you take, the more chances of side effects, more chances of drug interactions, right? So let's just see what you guys think. So if we look at seniors over the age of 65 in Canada, what proportion of them do you think are taking more than five medications a day? Yeah, so it's two-thirds. So 67% of seniors over the age of 65 take five or more meds. So if we know that, how many do you think are taking more than 10 medications? 25, or is it actually 26 or 7, <laughs> but it's about a quarter of our seniors are actually taking 10 or more medications. So, why is it? Obviously, we wouldn't be where we are today without medications, right? We're certainly living longer, we have better quality of life, but there are a lot of medications that have more harmful benefits, uh, harm than benefits. So, one of the classes that I'm going to pick on today is one that we know can be harmful uh, now. We didn't many years ago. So, one of the drug classes we target are proton pump inhibitors. prescribing to our seniors. So um, when we look at it, we were actually invited. So part of my initial research project 
projects when I came to work for the university involved uh, an invitation that we got to actually go in to St. Pat's Mercy Home. So Chi High, or the Centre uh, Canadian Institute for Health and Math and Information, um, they actually give every nursing home facility a report card every year on how they're doing. So obviously if we have this high rate of prescription use in our seniors, they actually saw on their report card that, wow, okay, we have a lot of medication use compared to other, uh, other provinces. So we went in, we did medication reviews for seniors living in one particular ward, and we were able to deprescribe three medications per resident on average. And what do you think happened? Nothing, <laughs> which is awesome. So it's not really, you know, a lot of research projects, we're not looking for the outcome to be nothing, but in this case, nothing happening is a really good thing. Because the concern is if you stop somebody's medications, things would go downhill, right? And they didn't. So it just kind of showed you that perhaps these medications were unnecessary. So I think one of the root causes of our issues with overprescribing tend to be prescribing cascades. So let's say you get diagnosed with high blood pressure. You're prescribed a medication that causes swelling of the legs. So you go to your doctor, you have swelling of the legs. Okay, well here's a fluid pill to get rid of the swelling on your legs. So then you're peeing all the time. So then you get a medication for your bladder. And that one makes you confused. So then you get something for your memory and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right? So at the MTS clinic, we actually sit down with patients for an hour. We go through all their medications and we look for opportunities for deprescribing. That's just one of the services that we do. And we often get prescribers sending folks our way when they see these long medication lists, when they go to kind of renew all the medications, or if someone's kind of struggling with anything along the way. So, uh, you know, there, these PPIs, or the proton pump inhibitors and benzodiazepines, aren't the only ones that we target. Um, there are other medications, of course, that we target as well. We know that we're the highest, um, we have the highest percentage of our seniors using opioids in the country, um, and also some really deep prescribing medications. So, that's all our deep prescribing. Uh, Jeremy's our other pharmacist that's with us at the clinic, so it's the two of us that work there full time. We've got two other clinical pharmacists that work in our smoking cessation program. So I do want to put in a plug. Uh, like I said earlier, we do have a lot of prescribers that will send folks our way for just our kind of our consultation. But we also uh, see people facing self harm So a lot of people right now don't have a family doctor. So they may, all, may also be concerned about the number of medications that they're taking. So they can actually just call us and make a point. And then we actually work with the prescribers, provide some recommendations for changes that would ideally suit the patient, and try to kind of nip those prescribing cascades in the bud. And sometimes we can get rid of a lot of medications. The Medication Therapy Services Clinic, or MTS Clinic, is a, a very unique clinic in Canada. It's one of three uh, pharmacist-like clinics across the country. So there's one in BC, one in Saskatchewan, and one here in Newfoundland, Labrador. All affiliated with universities like UBC and UCS. Yeah, yeah. So the clinic is based in the East End, so it's an off-campus clinic where the uh, some folks at the school pharmacy are located. And we, it's two, it's us two pharmacists as well as two other faculty members that run the smoking cessation clinic. And at the clinic, we have student supervision. So there's students that are housed at our clinic year round on their final placement in the smoking pharmacy program. And it gives uh, students a great opportunity to do real life examples. So real people will come in, they'll actually get to sit down with patients for up to an hour, really get to know the patient do an in-depth medication review and, and when we talk about a medication review that's the language that we have to use that's kind of when you come and sit down with the pharmacist you're going to go through all your medications but not just your medications we go through you know your medical conditions we talk about diet exercise lifestyle and so on and that helps us to guide recommendations for patients and a big thing that's happening now in the province is a lot of people don't have a primary care provider so we're able to provide them with resources um, provide them with pathways to get connected with the primary care provider and pharmacists are also able to prescribe for minor ailments so certain things we we're able to actually help um, people manage without actually a primary care provider um, yeah so the clinic's a very unique opportunity for people to come by and if you know any seniors or any family friends that are on multiple medications maybe they're having falls or having difficulty managing different chronic conditions like diabetes or hypertension then uh, this is our plug to send them our way at the MTS clinic 8642274 any questions guys yeah yeah well I mean when you look at the scope of pharmacy practice across Canada, we are not the worst. You know, when we look at what we are able to do to contribute to the healthcare system. So in uh, provinces like Alberta, for example, you, they can actually kind of 
prescribe for the first time. They can actually help prescribe for chronic diseases. Those are things that we cannot do here. However, the fact that we have been able to, you know, provide the most COVID vaccines out of any other profession over the last couple of years, all those other kinds of services are limited in other provinces. So we're doing okay in that regard, I think. When it comes to prescribing, we do have a fair number of collaborative physicians, which is really helpful. Um, we are actually partnered really closely with the Geriatric Medicine Service within Eastern Health. So folks that get referred to them usually get referred for cognitive problems or falls, older adults. So now we're actually seeing all of their patients before they see them to do a medication assessment to see if their root cause of their problem is actually medication side effect. So I would say collaboration is a big thing and our scope of practice. And I think the government said back in September <laughs> that an, uh, an announcement was coming in terms of pharmacy scope advancement. We're still anxiously waiting for that, but I'm hopeful that it'll be something good. And if I had to pick like an area, a therapeutic area that New Flint's doing good in, it'd definitely be vaccinations. We're definitely the top notch. Vaccinations. Yeah. That's actually a great one. So that's, we do a lot of the prescribing of aspirin. So a lot of people might be on it. So traditional guidelines were that if you're over the age of 50 and you had high blood pressure that you should go on a baby aspirin a day to kind of help prevent a heart attack or stroke that has since changed and now the risk of bleed has become greater than the actual benefits so oftentimes we're trying to uh, educate people about it obviously they feel comfortable sometimes with the aspirin and you need to let them make an informed decision um, but that is one of the things that we do and a lot clinic. of our folks have been taking baby aspirin yeah. for the believed benefits for like 50 years right so it's very hard to get them to have that mindset shift yeah. so we you know develop relationships try to give them as much education and why things have changed and then you know hopefully um, engage their prescriber as well to have those discussions with them yeah yep yeah yep yep Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. For sure. Right. And the diet, even like the access to healthy food, is so limited here compared to BC. And another big thing is. Uh, their government actually limited the coverage of proton pump inhibitors. They put restrictions in place, so you had to be on GI offending medications or you had to have a diagnosis of gastritis to be on these, and that actually cut out a significant amount of people. So because policy was put in place, it cut down a lot of the numbers. Yeah, a while ago. Because that was 27, 20, 2017, 2019 data that I shared. That was kind of pre-pandemic, so it'll be interesting to do it again. We're all done. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.